What is up guys, it's your boy Steady Chaos. Thank you for stopping by Steady Chaos Productions. So, I've had the PlayStation 5 for about three weeks now and I think it's time for a review. Let's do this. So, where to start with this beautiful machine? I guess we can start with the aesthetics of the PlayStation 5. It is a great looking machine in my opinion. Yes, it's a little bit on the larger side, but it is futuristic. It has nice, sleek curves. Uh, the white tone finish on the outside of the PlayStation 5 looks nice. The white tone finish on the controller as well looks really nice. And then the black sort of inside part of the console with the little grooves there and then the blue accent lighting when the PlayStation 5 is turned on. It is a beautiful, futuristic looking console in my opinion. Again, it is slightly larger, I'd say, than your average console, and that's maybe putting it a little bit mildly. It's quite large, actually. Uh, in comparison to the base PS4 and the PlayStation 4 Pro, it is several inches longer and it's certainly heavier. I would say that to some degree, you gotta be forewarned or at least understand that the PlayStation 5 size may dictate its placement. So if you have just a little bit of room in your entertainment stand, you may not be able to fit the PlayStation 5 in that slot. Just something to think of. Now moving on to the PlayStation 5's user interface. The user interface is very, very similar to the PlayStation 4. It has all of your games kind of listed horizontally in a line and you can just kind of scroll through and select whichever game you want. Uh, it works quickly. It's, it's more snappy than the PlayStation 4 user interface was primarily because on the PlayStation 5 you're talking about an eight core 16 thread processor, so it's more responsive. As far as transferring your username, transferring your games, your save data, your trophies, all your friends from the PlayStation 4 ecosystem, if you had a PlayStation 4 and a PlayStation Plus username and account, transferring all of that over to the PlayStation 5 is simple. You just kind of log in and pretty much everything shows up. I mean, your username is there. Like I said, your friends, all of your trophies are there. Uh, your game library is there to download. And of course, the great thing is the PlayStation 5 is backwards compatible with all PlayStation 4 games, or I think 99% of PlayStation 4 games. So if you have that game library transfer over from the PlayStation 4, well then if you wanna download it and play on the PlayStation 5, you certainly can do that. And the PlayStation Plus Store is also very similar in its functionality to the PlayStation 4 Store. Pretty much feels and acts the same way that the PlayStation 4 did. The whole process of, you know, looking through a game catalog, of making a purchase, it's all pretty easy, it's all pretty straightforward, which is appreciated. Now moving on to one of the most touted parts of the PlayStation 5 before its launch, and that is the solid state drive or the SSD. Now it is a truly next gen feature of the PlayStation 5 to have this solid state drive built into the console. It loads games really quickly. We're talking Spider-Man Miles Morales loading from the menu screen in game, taking about three to four seconds. Demon Souls, you know, we're talking four or five seconds to load in. Even PlayStation 4 games, that are now ported to the PlayStation 5 or are backwards compatible, that takes advantage of the SSD as well. So loading times might not always be three or four seconds for a PlayStation 4 game on the PS5, but it is certainly quicker. For instance, The Last of Us Part 2 has not been officially patched for the PlayStation 5, but loading times are about 20 or 30% quicker. Don't quote me on that specifically, but they're certainly quicker on the PlayStation 5 thanks to the SSD. You know, you're not, not only are you getting into games quickly, are you closing applications quickly, are you loading applications more quickly, but when you die in a game like Demon's Souls, on previous generations, you die and you're waiting, you know, five, 10, 15 seconds, sometimes longer to load back into the world. So whenever you die, you're like, God, now I have to sit here and wait until the game loads again. I hate dying because it's like a, it's like a penalty to sit there and wait for the game to load up again. Well, with Demon Souls, the remake on the PlayStation 5, when you die within two or three seconds, bam, you're spawned and you're right back into the game world. So this, this makes playing uh, a real treat. It makes dying over and over and over again in Demon's Souls, which you will do, um, feel a little bit more palatable, a little bit more acceptable, and, and gives you that extra drive to push through those deaths because you're not sitting around wasting so much time waiting for load times. 
and to branch off from the SSD, the PlayStation 5 console itself. I don't want to quite call it a powerhouse because when you compare it to, you know, GPUs just released from NVIDIA and AMD, like the 3080 or 3090, that's, you know, the 3090, the 30, those are powerhouse GPUs. But the PlayStation 5 custom AMD GPU compared to the base PlayStation 4 and the base Xbox One, it certainly is a powerhouse relative to those last generation consoles. Games look really, really sharp, really, really crisp, really, really nice on the PlayStation 5. And one thing I've noticed that the console really benefits from is the 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM. That RAM really allows games on the PlayStation 5 to have really sharp, really clear and defined textures, which really kind of redefine the whole world, which really make things look just absolutely gorgeous. And I really noticed this in Spider-Man Miles Morales. The textures all across the world are really, really sharp. And you add in ray traced reflections, which the PlayStation 5 is capable of, then you have really a visual treat on your hands here. And of course you tack on the, the added fact that the game is rendered in native 4K, you know, and you're talking about, like I said, just a visual feast for the player. And what's really, really nice with the PlayStation 5 is it kind of allows you to play how you want to play. So many of these games, including Miles Morales, Demon Souls, Call of Duty, they have performance modes that you can choose from and they have fidelity modes that you can choose from. So if you wanna play in 4K, maybe with some ray tracing, you can select the fidelity mode or the graphics mode. If you wanna play in you know, a lower resolution but prioritize frame rate, 60 frames per second, say, in Demon Souls, you can do that. Or if you wanna play in 120 frames per second, say in Call of Duty Cold War, then you can do that. You're just gonna have a more dynamic, lower resolution, say around 1440p to 1800p maybe, and you're not gonna have any ray tracing, that's for sure. Um, but the, the fact remains that in Call of Duty Cold War on the PlayStation 5, you can play the single player campaign at 120 frames per second and it is buttery smooth and responsive. Of course, your TV has to be natively capable of displaying 120 frames per second, but if it can, you are in for a treat. Oh, and one other tidbit noteworthy about the PlayStation 5 is that it not only can record your gameplay like you did on the PlayStation 4, but now it can record your gameplay not only in 1080p resolution, but it can also record your gameplay in native 4K resolution, which is nice. Now, one thing that is a bit of a negative when you refer to the PlayStation 5 and closing out an application and as it kind of relates to the user interface, is it's a little bit more of a convoluted process to close out a game on the PlayStation 5. We're talking about like one extra, one or two extra steps here. It's not a huge deal and I got used to it after a few days. But with the PlayStation 4, you could just hold down the PlayStation button on your controller and then you could close the application. Here, you have to press the PlayStation Home button on your controller and then you have to go down uh, to a menu. You have to open up the specific game and then you kind of scroll over to the right and you have to hit close application. So it's a little bit more of a laborious process, which is kind of a step back from the PlayStation 4, but it's not a huge deal. I just figured it was worth mentioning. And now to touch back on the SSD again, uh, another slight negative here is yes, as we mentioned, the SSD is really fast and it really makes the PlayStation 5 feel like a next gen system and it's really gonna open up a world of possibilities for game development. The one setback is because this SSD is so advanced, because it's so expensive and Sony wanted to keep the price down on the PlayStation 5, the PS5 only comes with an 825 gigabyte SSD. And a lot of that, those gigabytes are reserved for, you know, the system itself, um, which leaves you with around 690 to 700 gigabytes when all is said and done to actually use for games. And I have about five or six games installed on my PlayStation 5 right now, and that takes up about 80 to 85% of the hard drive. So for a lot of people who like to have multiple games, we're talking eight, nine, 10 games installed on the hard drive at once, they are probably gonna have to engage in some memory and SSD drive management. Now, one more thing I've also noticed about the user interface with the PlayStation 5, or maybe about its software in general, is because the PlayStation 5 is new, we're barely even not quite two months into its lifespan right now. A lot of the issues it has will be resolved with time, but it's kind of buggy right now. And one major bug that I've come across is setting the PlayStation 5 into rest mode. 
So if your PlayStation 5 is not active or not being used for, you know, say a couple hours, it'll set itself to sleep or put itself to rest. And then when you come back to the PlayStation 5, you hit the PlayStation logo on your controller, you turn the PlayStation back on, sometimes it's kind of unresponsive. Sometimes it's kind of laggy, it kind of stutters and skips, and I've experienced this numerous times. For instance, playing Demon Souls, I'd, I'd often play for like an hour or two, get frustrated because I'd died so much, step away from the console, it would go to sleep, I'd come back, turn the console on, and it would take me 60, 90, 120 seconds of just trying to work through the really, really slow, stuttery user interface to get back into the game. Once you're into the game, the PlayStation 5 runs fine, but that lagginess on the user interface once you get out of rest mode is really, really annoying. And I find the only way to really fix it is to either turn rest mode off so your, your console never goes to sleep, which wastes energy, or simply turn your console off entirely. Those are the only options right now until Sony patches the rest mode on the PlayStation 5. Now, moving on to the PlayStation 5 controller, the controller itself is very attractive. It has the two-tone color like I talked about, the white and the black. The joystick placement, as you can see, is standard, the same as the DualShock 4. All the buttons are the same as the DualShock 4, although they do have a nice clear look to them and they are nice and snappy. They feel really nice. Triggers are made of the same kind of material and have kind of the same positioning, uh, as well as the bumper buttons, as the DualShock 4. Now, I think the biggest difference here um, between the DualSense and the DualShock 4 is this section right here. The grips of the controller, they're a little bit more narrow, but they're longer. And so your middle ring and pinky finger really kind of wrap around the controller nicely and it feels really, really comfortable in your hand. I'd say the size is comparable to an Xbox controller, the haft and the weight. They went a little bit larger, but like I said, these longer sides here, they really do fit nicely in your hand. I have average size hands and the joystick placement is perfect. It feels really comfortable and I took to this controller right away. No problems to really speak of, no concerns. Of course, there is a period of acclimation when you use something like a DualShock 4 for seven or eight years. Switching over to a slightly larger controller like the DualSense will take a few days, if not weeks, to get fully used to. But for me, uh, the transition was seamless. There is still the tactile button in the center, just like the DualShock 4. It has a USB-C charging port on the controller. Also, one extra interesting feature on the DualSense controller is that you can use the DualSense as a headset, if you will, or a mic. Obviously, it's not on your head, but you can use it as a mic. So if you don't have a mic handy, or say your mic broke, and in a pinch you want to be able to play and communicate with some friends, you can use this controller as a microphone. So this is this little button right here is the button you would use to mute your voice or to unmute your voice. You speak into the controller and then you can mute yourself and then when your friends speak back to you, you can hear them through the controller or you could set it so that you can hear them coming through your TV speakers. So it works pretty well actually. I've tested it out in a few games. I mean, it's not as good as a dedicated mic and headphones, but in a pinch, if you're left with no alternative, it is certainly worthy of using. And then of course, no review would be complete without mention of the haptic feedback of the PlayStation 5's DualSense controller. The vibe, the, you know, the controller has regular vibration like a DualShock 4 did, you know, the whole controller will vibrate. And with certain games, the sense of vibration can be, uh, feel a little bit more nuanced than it did on the DualShock 4. Some of the sensations you can get feel a little bit different um, or a little bit more unique, which is nice. But all in all, it's not a huge departure from the DualShock 4 in terms of overall vibration. Where the DualSense really stands out from the pack though is the haptic feedback in the triggers. So for instance, a game like Call of Duty Cold War, when you pull the trigger to shoot, there'll be some resistance, like you're pulling a trigger on a gun, so there's some resistance, some resistance, and then when it finally fires, the trigger will click in and the resistance will abate. So it's resistance, resistance, and click, and then the gun fires. So it gives you that added sense of immersion, that added feeling like you're actually firing a weapon, which, you know, is kind of cool, it's different. It's, I'd say it's kind of like a novelty item, but for some people, they really like it. Now, I will say in a single player game, when, you know, speed is not of the essence, when reaction time is not of the essence, I do like it, it adds a nice sense of immersion. But when I'm playing Call of Duty Cold War online and I need tr the triggers to be really quick, 
really kind of responsive. I like to turn the haptic feedback off because when I'm firing the gun in multiplayer mode, there's some resistance, there's some resistance, and I want to be able to just have that quick, seamless trigger pull. So I have haptic feedback turned off, which you can do in the PlayStation 5's user interface settings. So it's nice, it's nice to have the option to use it, and it's also nice to have the option to disable it. Now the only real negative I have to say about the PlayStation 5 controller, in my experience so far in about three weeks, like I said, is the battery life is not very good. Now I don't know if that's because you have a controller that has more aggressive and effective rumble and vibration capabilities because it also has haptic feedback built in. There's a lot of stuff because it can act as a headset or, or a microphone and because it has a built-in speaker, there's just a lot of stuff going on with this controller so maybe its power demands are higher. I don't know, but one thing I have noticed is that after about two to maybe three hours of consistent use, you need to charge this thing. I feel like almost every gameplay session I have, I get the warning in the top right section of the screen, battery power low, you know, charge controller. It's like, oh my God. It's not a huge deal for me because I sit close to my screen, so you just use the USB-C and you charge it up, no big deal. But if you like to sit far back on your couch and game from 10, 11 feet away on a massive screen, then you're gonna be charging this thing quite a bit. And you're gonna need a long USB-C cord to do that if you wanna sit on your couch. Gaming features aside, if you have the PlayStation 5 disc-based version of the console, then that means you can play 4K HDR10 Blu-rays on your PlayStation 5. And the PlayStation 5 does a really, really fine job playing 4K HDR10 Blu-rays, in my opinion. I've tested a few. You know, I've tested Fury with Brad Pitt. I've tested Avengers. HDR looks nice. I don't notice any distinct differences between my PlayStation 5 and my Sony X800 Blu-ray player in the living room room playing 4K discs. The playback looks just as sharp on my PlayStation 5 and seems to be just as capable. Keep in mind though, the PlayStation 5 disc-based version, while it does play HDR10, it does not play Dolby Vision discs, which is kind of unfortunate, but worth mentioning. So in closing, I have to say the PlayStation 5 is truly a next-gen console. It feels next-gen to me with the loading times, with the super sharp textures and 4K resolution in games like Spider-Man Miles Morales, with you know performance mode for 60 and 120 frames per second if your TV can handle it. The player really does have that choice to play how they want to play. Do they want to emphasize visuals? Do they want to emphasize performance? It's nice to have that. And the loading times with the SSD, they are so fast. Um, sitting around waiting for games to load for minutes on end or hell, even seconds on end, those days are pretty much done. And loading times are only going to get faster as developers become more familiar with the PlayStation 5 hardware. So that is definitely an exciting prospect. And I do think that over time, the way games are played, the structure of certain games, they're, they're going to be fundamentally changed by this super fast SSD, and that's an exciting prospect. And of course, all of this is made even better by the fact that transferring your PlayStation 4 username and friends, that entire ecosystem, over to the PlayStation 5 is seamless. You take your username, you take your friends, you take your trophies and achievements, it all comes with you to the PlayStation 5, and the transition is truly seamless. And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that if you are a PlayStation Plus subscriber and you buy the PS5 and you don't have any games right away, well, because the PlayStation 5 is backwards compatible and because you are a PlayStation Plus subscriber, you have access to the PlayStation Plus collection, which is about a dozen or so games from the PlayStation 4 era, including greats like Mortal Kombat 10, um, Bloodborne, Uncharted 4. So that is really, really nice for Sony to kind of implement for brand new PlayStation 5 owners who have yet to buy a PS5 game. It's the controller that looks and feels next gen. It's the controller with the advanced haptics, which no other controller can claim. The advanced vibration and rumble features, that kind of is the cherry on top of the next gen experience. So I can't recommend this console enough. And don't forget the fact that if you get the disc-based version of the PS5, you can play 4K HDR10 movies. So some minor limitations notwithstanding, like some minor bugs with the UI, the rest mode not working particularly well, those things will be ironed out in time with firmware patches, I'm certain. Supply is still very, very tight and they're still very hard to come by, but if and when they do become available through retailers and you have the option to buy one and you are a Sony PlayStation fan 
or you are a PlayStation 4 fan and you want to you want to take that jump to PlayStation 5 but you're not sure if it's worth the four or five hundred dollars rest assured if you're a gamer it's worth every penny this console you'll have it for at least the next probably seven to nine years and a five hundred dollar investment in my opinion is absolutely worth it so take the plunge you won't regret it and uh, that's pretty much gonna do it for me guys that is my review early on anyway only three weeks into owning the playstation 5 so hopefully you have enjoyed Hopefully it's helped you make a decision on whether or not you want to pursue purchasing a PlayStation 5. If you have liked this video, please leave a like, leave a comment, let me know. And if you can, please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you guys later for more product reviews. Peace.